Oh, I'm crazy. Oh All right. God. Well, we're just we're back. We're talking about dragon asses right now. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, That's... our mind is just concentrated completely on the lower region of the body tonight. Uh, where were we at? Uh, I recall that there was some thoughts about info. punching robots. Yeah, we got a bunch of info, and then we substituted kill for go to the farm. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah, so what's the plan now, gang? The plan is we go kill him. Where and yeah, when will you kill him? Go to the farm now. Oh, God. I'm gonna like I'm gonna just like is there an emergency stop button in the elevator? Yeah. <laughs> and let's be clear here, there's like ten, 10 other people. Other people in I'm the aware, elevator. I'm aware. I know some of the people in here. Yeah, you've been I'm like I'm motherfucking Harvey Glasscock Esquire. My <laughs> skin has just been talking about murder radiation. for like two minutes, <laughs> nonstop yeah. blabbering without ever, ever like shutting up. Like is respectful in the elevator. Now you pull the emergency lever. And some guy <laughs> in the back is just like, "Excuse me, friend." Do you see how tan my skin is? Shut up, peasant. <laughs> are we not in a society of equals sir i must yes, ask that... equal in that my skin is glowing and radiant and glorious and your skin is are you even are you do you even have enough vitamin d to be considered one of us anymore <laughs> <laughs> he's just like sir i'll have you know that my flesh tone color is ff0036 well no are actually not ff0000 you think my skin is red <laughs> Wait, is that actually what the hex code is for? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's pure red, right? Uh, well, I don't no, know. I th I'm going for whatever is whatever is actually white. I mean, zero 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 is white. Uh, nothing well, no, I white. want to. Uh, I guess either probe. Uh, I want to like do an action so I can actually use like my HUD and my analyzation abilities to actually see what his levels are at. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe it'd be like a dive behind the veil, seeing as I'm kind of interlinked with the system. and I can No, just I mean, you're examining his reactions during an interaction. You're, that's what you're literally doing, right? You're, like, watching him talk to Harvey. Yeah, I feel it's like probe is... Analyze? Um, when you use what you have at your disposal to assess a situation. I guess you could go for that, too. Yeah. Okay. What emotion are you rolling on? Probably... Peaceful because I'm at no, actually, I'd probably you be only have two unlocked, right? I have three. Um, so I'm probably going to be emulating what he is, and I'm be seeing him as this is more or less a display of power, so I'm probably going to be using it off of power. You're like a cuttlefish. <laughs> I miss. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, yeah. So uh... I'm not able to like kind of help him in the situation. Like, I want to interject and be like, his D level is at. Oh, you know. the guy immediately like slaps you in the face and is like, <laughs> "Incredibly disrespectful, you pathetic pile of garbage." As uh, soon as he slaps him, I hit. I, I, my metallic arm comes flying up and I hit him. Boom. Yeah, and and he's just like, "You hit me, you piece of trash." I demand satisfaction from this robot. Uh, and he he opens his mouth and like his veil chip takes over. And he starts like offering 2.0 a contract where you owe him one Geary for deeply insulting him on this level. Uh, but it's super. He's speaking like, this is a non reliable one uh, insured by the Harvey Glass. But it's like appearing in the veil in front of you is like a huge scroll that unfolds. Uh, yeah, you've, you've offensed him by like, you've checked him out and analyzed him without his permission and then talked about him, his D levels. That's private. Oh, no. Like, I, I was interpreting the miss as, uh, I just didn't even get a chance to interact. Like, I... Yeah, I, yeah, no, no, because, yeah, he's, he's like, you've, you've offensed me, sir. I demand satisfaction. You owe me. Well, same as satisfy him for, so we can get on with this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I pull out my gun. <laughs> Is this the size of satisfaction you're going to need? Look deeply into the barrel of this. <laughs> I want to I wanna remind you, you are here to enforce Geary. So yeah. if you do this, this is your you job. You wrongfully on the line. attacked my companion. Uh, your companion <laughs> attacked me by checking my D levels, man. I wanna... <laughs> Can I wanna... someone get the, the elevator restarted? We're still. Listen. 
I have a sun bath to get to. <laughs> I like hit the, the start button again, and then I try to absorb his emotions. Oh, okay. To, to try to calm him down. Now, how does this work? You're, you're um, flowing on him? Uh, I, so I begin with zero flow when you intentionally draw on emotions around you. Some uh, Name someone present, so I'll name him. Uh, if it's a PC, it's not. If it's an NPC, the MC will tell you uh, what you can absorb from them when you roll. Okay. Um, so who are you naming? Uh, that guy, the, the uppity fellow. His name is Surf Sub. <laughs> okay. Surf Sub, here it comes. Oh, uh, you can draw some anger from him. Uh, and you have a 10 plus. I mean, you have a 7 and 9, so you can choose 2. Okay. Um, I'll make him unaware of what I'm doing. Um, and then I'll name him and clear or fill his emotions, and I want to clear all of his anger. Okay. Uh, and as a result, you do spike anger? Is that what happens? Yeah, I spike anger. Yep. Okay, you go mad, and he's just like, oh. Um, so I want to cut back to 2.0 real quick. Are you accepting his contract for Geary? Like, the societal respect that you owe him for messing with him without his permission. Well, first things first, I have to actually analyze and try and understand what that means. I mean, you know what that means. You know what Geary is instinctively. That's what I'm saying, is I'm saying, like, I don't have... So he's doing this out of, um... Was he I'm, doing it out of MAD? What, so I probably would have understood it. Yeah. Um... So, you, I mean, you know Seamus, right? So, and you have Geary on other people. You know how this works. Well, no, I believe it's... The way that I believe that 2.0 interacting with this is people say, like, I owe you a debt, or you owe me a debt, and he's just like, if that's what a human wishes. But Yeah, he well, really that's what this guy is saying. He's literally like, you owe me a debt. <laughs> I'd probably just say like on a verbal level, but I don't acknowledge that. I may not know that I have to do something on the. Okay. Vehicle. All right. Well, as long as you acknowledge it, that's good enough for what he needs. Because unless somebody you else can call Seamus up and be like, "Yo, this robot's not doing what I tell him to," so Mister Surfs up. But this is where I don't know if the other three might interject into this because they might know that I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, it sounds like Seamus is definitely interjecting with a gun to this guy's face. Uh, and now that he's no longer mad, he's just looking at your gun and is like, um, can you get that out my face, dude? I'll say situation is resolved, man. Good, good. Are you saying that to be him? No, no harm done Wait. to Seamus. Oh. Slash compactor always getting in the way. Go, get back over there, 2.0. I'll just... Reholster my gun and turn and face towards the elevator door and wait patiently. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pat Seamus in the back with my big greasy sweaty palms. <laughs> hey, good job, Seamus. You showed him who's boss. So I'd probably just kind of walk away from that veil contract thing. Just not. I mean, we're in an elevator, like. Yeah, you can't exactly walk away unless you're walking through the wall. <laughs> well, I guess I'm gonna go like, wait in the corner now. now. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so anyway, you know, guys, look, we can we can go to two. I must obey human beings, <laughs> mm. and at the moment, Glasscock is the prime operative with the other. Oh, I, I get the biggest D in this elevator for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so should we? So right. should we go to this uh, on the way to this uh, arena? We should make a plan, maybe. Yeah, well, that's what we were trying to do before, apparently, Trask and Pactor went over and <laughs> caught on that guy's face. He does well, look very pale, though, just for observation purposes. Look. Right. He, le he cuts back into the conversation. He's like, I'm going to get my sunbathing on, okay, dude? That's what I'm doing uh, right now, man. I don't want yeah. a Morlock out. Yeah, Morlock. Anyways, um... <laughs> <laughs> Just under my breath, like more like says what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I love the voice that you're doing, typical. It's, yeah, it's, it's so gold. Good. It's gold. Um, so maybe we get out of this place and start walking towards, like, maybe we have a car waiting since you're a, a big daddy D or whatever. You think, you think that I'm going to Hover chairs, daddy right? D. You guys. D on simple conveyance? No, sir. <laughs> straight to the bank. Uh, okay. We're walking. <laughs> I th- no, I thought you guys got around by like Pelican. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, Pelican. like that was that was my original intent, but we're kind of supposed to be incognito down here, as much as Harvey Glasscock can be. Well, remember, okay. this guy only meets with, with guys with huge D, so that's true. But we're all okay. Okay, you know, so like I'll I'll pull them into like are there like cafes, like little like you know places where we could meet up, have a cup of soy calf. Did UV rays? There's literally just like black lights so that you can get sunned. <laughs> It's just tanning boots. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> a big, a big shade, like a heat lamp at a restaurant that just beams down UV rays on people. All right. So you go to the UV rays. <laughs> all right, boys. All right. Look. Now, I think we can all agree of everybody we've got going on here that uh, this Mr. Uh, Jean Baptiste or what a funny name. Jean Baptiste Oric Jr. He gotta go. He's gotta be taken to the firm <laughs> really heavily. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Kill him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, taken to the farm and then the remaining Ulrichs, we're gonna have to get some sort of leverage on them. Something that's from their past, something perhaps that are are talented. He's got really good hands in my point over at Kip. <laughs> He knows how to get everything out of someone, relieve all their tension. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, maybe maybe we could. Okay, he likes robot fighting. We got a we got a big dumb trash compactor over here. You like fighting, don't you, Two Point I am not allowed to harm other human beings. No. What about other robots? Can you can you punch robots really hard? If I am asked to do so. Okay, I'm gonna need you to punch robots for me, Two Point <laughs> Not right away. Not, not right now. Sooner or later, we're gonna have to do it. And, um, and I'll I'll do what I do. At the as long as I can get to a place that he's been around, then you know that I can do you know my thing. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to get. He's probably got some private box or something like that. We need to talk our way in there. He, what he sees what I'm working with over here. I'm gonna like turn to the side so people can see my speedo, like <laughs> my and my heavy gold chain around my neck. Okay. What she sees, who he's dealing with. I think he'll he'll give us a meeting, but we're gonna have to make him entry. Something to make it worth his while. So maybe if we can enter 2.0 into these fights, and then Seamus, once we get close enough to Ulrich, you can shoot him in the head. Yes. Sure, you can ensure that he's taken to the farm where he will live out his life in the sunlight and the happiness, just like 2.0 wants. Oh uh, yes, all of the yes. And then, and then, Kip. Once, once we got him, Kip can go through. He can just rifle through all of his stuff like a little raccoon, just, just, just getting into his stuff and figuring out his secrets. And that's what we're gonna do. Ah, oh, Manly's gonna be so happy with me. Manly is Harvey's older brother, Manly Glasscock. <laughs> I'm writing that down. <laughs> I don't know. You might have to roll late. Is there? I mean, is there a huge glass cock? I feel like huge is probably your like oldest brother. Maybe he's your um, dad. There's a, there's a hairy glass cock. Oh, no huge glass cock. No, there's a hairy glass cock and a Richard glass cock. That's kind of redundant. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Dick glass cock. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can your uh, mother be Joanna glass cock? I mean, I feel like we're treading in some pretty dangerous waters right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Considering I just said that, like, I am the only one of the Glasscock family currently on this planet who is not, like, sub Saharan African. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. No one so questions it. Way. It's not weird. Except yeah. for Seamus. Who knows? <laughs> no, no, Kip's the one that knows. Oh, Kip. Who knows? Yeah. I just always roll my eyes. I'm like, yeah, you're a specimen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I feel like we need to find our way down to this robot fight. Uh, Seamus, do you know anything about this place? It sounds like the kind of place that someone like you would go. Some violent psychopath that likes to go watch other people be hurt. <laughs> 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 
and I say it with no judgment, no like you're a bad person. <laughs> just like this is my accurate representation of who I think you are. Are you sure you're not just playing Dante? Like, Wait, is this? I mean, like, I know that you're, Stalin you're, there's. Said, I'm sensing some Danteisms uh, from time to time. I don't know. I mean, Harvey Glasscock has existed for months. I understand. I understand. Maybe there's similarities between them just because of their base personality. <laughs> their base personality, the desire for wealth. Yeah, and being Power. an asshole. Except I, I feel like Harvey is much less adept at what he does. He just sort of <laughs> bumbles through life successfully by having other people talented around him. I feel the exact opposite is true of Dante. Exactly. He's the saying. talented one and everyone around him bumbles through life. Uh, yeah, Shamus. What are you doing here? You've been called out. Sir, you know very well that I only kill at your orders. And just because I am exceptionally good at what I do does not necessarily mean that I enjoy violence. Quite the contrary, in fact. I am very... I'm I'm uh, quite fond of operas and things of that nature. So this, no, I do not know where the fighting fits in. opera and also enjoy watching two more like bash each other in the head with rusty pipes. <laughs> they're, they're not mutually exclusive. I'm just waiting for Seamus to be like, hey, just because I'm like this doesn't mean anything, but it's right over there. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I'm like, it's on level 23. See, that's a good point, Seamus. I knew it. Okay, look, look. So, um, I obviously look great, but the, you guys might you might need a little bit of uh, a little bit of sprucing up to be impressive enough for John Baptiste Overs Jr. to accept you into his private box. So, I will give each of you a stipend. I'm gonna slide each of them one brick of vitamin D credits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, or maybe maybe your or we could have like a plan where you're bringing in like a fighter. Yeah, we're bringing two point That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but so like then maybe it doesn't matter that we're not like social statusy because you are right. You're and we're I mean, like you backing you up. Yeah, but this is I'm employed by you. I don't necessarily need to look as affluent as you do. I understand this. Look, 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 look. look. It would make me feel better. We can get you some spray can. We can get you some, uh, and just give us a point of Speedo. Do you want to get some of these? <laughs> the one piece suit with the V-neck. That's right. And uh, once you get all these set up, then we go in there. Uh, Those garments are extremely non-tactical. They're, we, they don't get caught on anything. They're, they're smooth on your skin. No chafing. How is that not tactical? It also gives you a lot of surface. They offer limited apply. protection from, from weaponry. What do you mean? You just put on the sunscreen. <laughs> That's why they make the Under Armour sunscreen. It's called Under Armour for a reason. <laughs> I love that Shamus is the only person who gets that shooting someone is highly effective <laughs> in this. <laughs> he's literally like the fucking giver. Uh, he's like, um, I have a secret knowledge. Bullets hurt people. Right? And everyone uses freaking SPF 90 for armor, and my gun is uniquely qualified to penetrate that. <laughs> All right, look, I, I employ you as my tactical liaison consultant for a reason. I will, if you don't want to wear the latest fashion and show off what you going on under all that clothing and armor and everything, that's up to you. I, guess, I mean, I guess, but Kip, come on, come on, Kip. Remember that time we spent together? Remember? Remember when I had you waxing my, all the hair off my body one oh my time? <laughs> oh, you know what? Because this is the veil. I would love that if both of you were remembering the same memory at once, it would it's like display. Too. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be like it'll be like two, like a dot here, a dot there. A yeah, dot there. perfect. Nice one memory, and I'm just like, that's a nice memory deleted. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Well, no, it'll be like one of those things. Like I see both of you like referencing this, and then it's, there's like a hollow tape log that flashes by, and then I just like kind of remember reach I record it, open everything. It up. My fucking cybernetic eyes record everything. <laughs> oh yeah, then I could probably see this happening. So mm -hmm. oh god, I see both of us be like swiping through the slideshow of like the pictures from that <laughs> night, the candles, the rose petals, oh, the, like the used discarded wax strips on the ground with all of my big bushy chest hair on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Harvey remembers everything behind these hazel eyes. That's right. Kelly Clarkson, get wrecked. That's right, America. 
And I'm just like, okay, okay, time to go, time to go. <laughs> okay, so what's the plan though? You, you're gonna, you want us to oh, put on I'm, armor? Look at me. I'm gonna go talk to Ulrich or whatever, right? I'll take care of that part. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna rely upon Seamus to know the right time to transport him to the firm up, up, up the, the stack to the top. And then Kit, once we get Ulrich taken away, you're gonna have to go and like rifle through all of his belongings. And then uh, 2.0, I'm giving you an order right now. You're going to go and you're going to beat to death whatever robots <laughs> they put in front of you in the arena. Okay. The report of my SMG is rather loud. I recommend that I utilize my sword to remove his head from his body. That would uh, be I don't even know what words you're using. Are you <laughs> making What is it even an SMG? No one even knows what that means. <laughs> I employ you for a reason. That reason is to know the best way to send people to the farm, right? Yes, I, I believe decapitation would serve quite well. I don't, don't need no details. I don't need to know any of the details, all right? Just make sure that they are safely transported and we'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Now, um, can you actually fight things effectively 2.0 or should we actually be putting our money on the other robots? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, wish for a demonstration? Uh, is there, okay, so we're in this little shitty UV cafe, right? Yeah. Are there any like server bots or anything around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like Wally, -E, where the robots all like go on floor tracks. Like a tree so with no, sun tanning lotion. <laughs> no one, no one can steal them because they're like bolted to the floor track. Mm -hmm. So one like rolls over when you wave for it, and it's like, um, oh, it's the veil. So it looks like a person to you, right? Like as right. long as you're chipped in, it looks like. Uh, whatever your preference and sexual partner is that you set on your Facebook page, it looks like that. Your future uh, book page. Mine is just like a slightly less hairy kip. D book. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, like a slightly less hairy kip to you rolls up and is like, uh, hi. Would you like me to apply some sunscreen to your body everywhere? I would like you to attempt to defend yourself in Mortal Kombat. Get a two point out. <laughs> so uh the the thing is just like processing that's outside my current range of services so I don't know why 2 is waiting i know i imagine that to 2.0 it's just a robot because he doesn't because since it's trying to pull something that's just not there he just looks like a robot to him so i took um uh for my weapon depowered limbs uh <laughs> so i get five tags to this i just chose intimate ap and then three and harm just so it's just like just solar powered punches you have to get in real close to this thing if I could destroy it too. You're a horrible monster. <laughs> tell me how tell me what's happening. So I guess he's just gonna tell me to obliterate it and I'm just gonna punch it like straight in the chest as like you just see um so everybody else would just see like, you know, uh just glow come out of like my white woven cloth um arms from like all the scars that I have. So it's just gonna be exuding brilliant D as I punch him. All right. I'd like for this server to somehow turn into like a really good defensible bot like it's been like this cafe has been like bombed before or something and it's like no no i won't fight but if they've you been robbed you, you know <laughs> i mean it has so first off it has to have at least some armor because it works in a d cafe so it's gotta you know but yeah let's let's roll uh how are you feeling about this you know powerful explosion oh you want to feel powerful yeah you want to feel good because you're beating up your good bot friend well, I don't know. I'm just being told to be powerful. Yeah, there's no choice. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm being ordered to be powerful. So uh, the way mm -hmm. that I saw this was, it's not going to be like I inject somebody with radiation. It's literally just a punch that's like super powered, like so, like straight cyborg limb punch. You know what I mean? So that's why I made it do so much damage. It'd be I, funny if, yeah. like, when you did this punch, your face looked like Glasscock because you're emulating powerful. <laughs> so you do like Ooh, a like yeah. A okay. So I go to uh, strike it and I just uh, miss its head. No, no. I think you hit it in the head. And then what happens is the cafe locks down uh, in cyberspace. It looks like uh, like bars are coming down over all the windows and like things are rolling in front of the door. But in reality, what's happening in the physical realm is that, uh, you know, 
Just just like a little alarm klaxons going off. And more and more robots are showing up around you 2.0 uh, using oh. the floor rail system and are just like, please step back. Please step back. Please step back. <laughs> well, I actually uh, have a question. So on my cybernetics, I all, I have compensating. Does that do anything for my role? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, the robot that you punch in the face just turns to you 2.0 and is like, I'd like to ask you to please step back, but have you considered that when you try to kill me, you're breaking my third law? You're breaking my third law. So it's trying to talk to me, like, on the veil, or is it trying to... No, I mean, yeah, like, physically, it's it's sending this out to everyone in the area. Uh, and you, you realize it's intentionally running, like, a subtlety program to get you to stop attacking it by, like, hitting you in your emotions and making you feel like you're a shitty person. Uh, that's the... Because the robots can't physically defend themselves against humans, right? So they just try to make you feel like you're a piece of shit. Uh, and it's recognized that you are a robot and it's just like, I must compensate by calling on the third law. And all the other robots then like open their mouths and are all like, yes, please stop hurting our friend. Please evacuate the cafe immediately. Uh, and so for you, Harvey, there's like a ton of kips standing around you right now, all asking you to leave. I am so fucking mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, I'm going to open up and just say that, you know. I am being directed by the second law to perform or to attack and, you. And no, stop, two point no, stop destroying your beautiful kit bots. <laughs> so, yeah, the bots are all like, "You have been ordered to hurt us." It's so terrible and beautiful. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna like get up. I'm gonna yank two point no, and I'm gonna try to exit the cafe. I'm gonna stroke one of the kit bots' faces as I walk by, just longingly, like a single finger. <laughs> I mean, that probably looks weird to Seamus and Kip because you'd be stroking whatever their ideal sexual partner looks like. So, oh yeah, yeah, but sure. yeah, it's like Petunia, and you're like stroking her face. Oh yeah, just my big greasy sausage fingers down the side of her face. <laughs> <laughs> leaving like a residue of sweat and like tanning oil <laughs> <laughs> yeah Seamus, Kip, you're still here the robots are all trying they're like, subtlety program has kicked in and they're trying to make everybody in the area feel bad about, about the harm they've suffered uh, and they're asking everybody to vacate the D-bar and again, they can't physically harm you or like touch you and push you out but they're just like wouldn't it be a good time to go get a sandwich? Here's a voucher for 50% off of a vitamin-infused uh, Philly cheesesteak. Uh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, you have a one voucher for 50% off at Dama John's. I like... I'm like... Uh, like, the next time I trigger an emotion, I'll be spiked out. So I'm, I'm probably always, like, on the You're cusp. On the verge. Right now. So I probably, like... Put it, put it in like my, my face and petunias and I'm like, you should have stayed with me, bitch. And then I like take the flyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> so like your ideal <laughs> sexual partner is your ex-lover who hates you. And yeah. he hates her. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Social so, commentary. Yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, the both of you now have a 50% off voucher for uh, mm. a vitamin D infused sandwich at uh, Dama John's. Well, it turned out to be a good day after all. <laughs> all right, look, we, got, uh, we should probably be betting on the other robots because it's fucking trash compactor can't hit for shit. Well, but no, he said that I hit, but that's one of the questions I had. Technically, I would have dealt three and harm that bypassed armor. Right, but you didn't hit hard enough to like to do okay. anything. Like, gotcha. you you must have hit it on like a faceplate or something. So uh, I just like knocked off like uh, Kip's cheek, and that's what caused him to react yeah. to that. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah. So what's the plan now, fam? Time to go infiltrate some robot fighting. Robot fighting yeah. arena. I mean, yeah. I feel like you guys still haven't found out where it is, but surely we can oh. have a quick scene no, where Shamus and Kip. Shamus and Kip are like eating their Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, yeah. and there's like a television veil type thing. Uh, it's, 
it's something that's on the TV in real life, and then it like pops out and does like three dimensional if you're cooked into the veil at the moment. Of of like the arena fight starting live on floor twenty three subsection twenty one. And I look at I look at uh, Seamus and I'm like, can you believe these pansies don't even know where it is? <laughs> Some people just don't enjoy the finer points of good entertainment. Mm-hmm. I like opera. Or more like death fights. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, as you're like leaving Dama John's, there's like, and tonight, limited, one time only, Morlock Death Fights! <laughs> yes. Returning yes. champion, Paley the Destroyer! Paley. Well, actually, this is like an important thing for 2.0, as like he's heard um, Glasscock talk a lot about these Morlocks, and he's going to be like, uh, Harvey, are Morlocks yeah. not considered humans? Morlock could like okay look we're in we're in like a Dama Johns right? A You're walking of out of the Dama Johns. Oh, we're not in there anymore. Uh, I mean, you can still be in there if you want to be. Yeah. I was, I was, I'm just gonna point like one of the fucking ovens. Like, is that are you equal to that robot or not that robot? That machine back there, that oven. Are you the same? No. That's the difference between a Morlock and an uptowner like me. Morlocks are not. <laughs> down bar. Morlock are basically just, they have no brains anymore. They're all squishy. They're, they, do you see the color of their skin? It's basically like toothpaste. Like it's just, it's terrible. It's mushy and white and, and awful. So my governing laws do not apply to Morlocks. No, of course they don't. Do I need to like roll any kind of like? No, I mean, that sounds legit. You've established this in the fiction. I agree okay. with it. Yeah, yeah. So you could, if, if you need to, you can just crush their little weak skulls, their bones. They're very brittle. Because they don't have any vitamin D, uh, so just just snap them like twigs. You know what a twig is? Have you ever seen a twig? No. Like one day when we go to the farm, I'll take you there, and then you can see a twig. I look forward to that. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll is be the good. farm literally just a cemetery at the top? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got one it's, tree. It's the ultra rich get buried in the space that a living person should be in. It's like the ultimate fucking coup, or like the coup. I love the idea of of like while you're walking and going through the elevators, there's an advertisement playing for a popular new TV show about someone who works in like the Morlock extermin extermination squad. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Mog, the Morlock Hunter. Uh, really, no one. All right. <laughs> I am the Mog, the big bad Mog. No. Okay. I think I, I think I'm I the only one who watched Dogs Bound here on Earth. It's fine. No, uh, I've, 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 I've well, seen. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, from that um, important piece of information, I want to do some uh, research in the abyss on the Murlocs. So I was going to do an abyss stairs back. All right, cool. Partial, so I get one humanity to spend. All right. Um, I'm going to use that to. So for advantage, is that just the pool that I gain, and I can use when I need it? Uh. Yeah. So you just. Like, is it? Does it say take one forward? Yeah, he's got one humanity right now, right? Yeah, yeah I have so one you humanity. Just, so you would like cash that in when you want to use it for that. Okay, so and, when I want to use like rise, I could then get advantage. Like I'm when I'm fighting and stuff like that. Yeah, like, and then you would. Marlock, I could get that extra three d six towards the roll. Yeah, you instead of rolling two d six, you roll three and take the two highest. And okay. then also, uh, like, fictionally, you reference whatever gave you that humanity, probably. Okay, cool. So I'll just have that humanity in a bank. Oh, God. You're like, <laughs> I know how to kill Morlocks. I studied them. That's why I know this hurts you, Shepard. Uh, they're turning me into a monster. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's like an accelerated arc of Swan Song where Pi just goes more and more insane. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do we, we get to the arena and outside there's a schedule. Uh, it's, it's literally like planned down to the second where every fighter is going to be at all times. Uh, like Paley, the destroyer, like, it's just like in holding cell for like 22 seconds and then like release into the arena for at least five minutes. Uh, and your, your target uh, John Baptiste Ulrich Jr. is listed as like every week when he comes down to fight. He always stops at he the bar. For... What? 
Oh, I thought he was. Yeah, he was no, he personally fights a bunch of robots. <gasps> Oh! He always stops in the bar and gets a mojito. Uh, so he takes a five-minute mojito break, exactly five minutes. Uh, and there's like a note there, the like warning: if you, you know, if you attempt to make him go over time, like we are not respond. The establishment is not responsible for any fans that attempt to bother Mr. Ulrich while he's getting his mojito. If you attempt to keep him for longer than five minutes, uh, and you suffer harm on our premises, we are not legally bound by Geary in order to refund you any cybernetics lost can we can we say it's canon it's a modito modito modito. sure (laughs) they sprinkle in some metrosistris just to you know so uh this is just me trying to clarify like on the stats and stuff when i fail on a roll that's when i add a uh a thing right that's when i add a check mark i think you always add a check mark when you roll anytime you roll anything okay cool and then if you roll the opposite stat, then you can take one away from the opposite and then add that one. Okay. So, yeah, uh, he's also scheduled to be in several robot fights tonight. Uh, and then he has a business meeting at the end of the night, which is fairly typical, where he invites you know members of the audience that want to do business with this company up to his box. Uh and then people he don't like are ejected by being punched in the face, and people he does like get to stay and talk to him. Ooh. Okay, sounds like I need a distraction. <laughs> so, just for your guys' knowledge, this is how I'm going to play out me assigning my stats, like the 2, 1, and all that type of stuff. Basically, it's going to be whatever emotion spikes, that's going to be the top stat, and it's just going to go from there. So whichever emotion I spike first is what I'm going to assign that. I don't think you're going to spike this episode, but it is possible. I am at three powerful right now. Okay. (laughs) You need six, but you could get there, right? Yeah. Uh, Five. I only need to get to five, I think, right? Well, five and then trigger and move. Five and then trigger. Okay, cool. Um, So maybe I think that he would respect you know, a Geary enforcer. So maybe you can engage with him and then I can try to do my like recreate thing happening to get up on that. So are we sending in Seamus and Kip to work together? I have no What's idea up? who it is, like out of character, like in, in and out of character. I <laughs> thought we were going to use uh, um, Harvey Glasscock as a business, affluent business oh, yeah. man to get a right. business dealing with him and you know because oh, and keep him busy and then i may be a geary enforcer but that just boils down to i'm a hitman you know mm-hmm. who works for harvey mm-hmm. a well-known associate so so you are going to keep him busy at the modito place <laughs> and i'll go to his private area to create stuff to i mean to couldn't play. you do the opposite you could go to the modito place because he's he always shows up there for a specific amount of time. You could read his emotions there. Yeah. yeah. If you're willing to read his emotions directly, then yeah, we could definitely... And then after the fights, we can have a business meeting with him and I can kill him. You know, how how difficult would it be for me to like slutty kip up a little bit? Like, you know, I don't know what the actual terms of attraction are in the setting. Kip, like... how, how sexy are you right now? Like, mm, not just your like... D level, but... Probably like not at all. Like probably just professional. Yeah, I'm gonna like I'm gonna try to like you know, open his shirt buttons up a little bit and like. I need a makeover. Yeah, like the, the whole reason is because I know I know in character that you're that you read people through your hands, right? Basically. Yeah, I have to touch them. Yeah, so I need to get you close enough to make skin to skin contact with this guy. Yeah. So I'm going to approach him. And be like, look at this fine gift I got you. Look at it. Look at it. Look how tan he is. <laughs> Yeah, well, for like it depends what we're going for. If I do search feelings to read the emotional residue of an area, then I just do that. If I you want to read the uh, emotional residue of this dive bar next to a murder club, yeah, so I don't have to like, I don't have that doesn't sound like the best idea in the world. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if he fails on the roll, you know, I'm gonna make that be a thing, but yeah, well, so we we want to kill him, right. So yeah. maybe, eventually, eventually, we need the blackmail input. Yeah, but we need the information first. Well, maybe what we should do, though, is maybe we go to him, and then I spike out an emotion that would be detrimental for him, and then he goes and fights. That would actually be an interesting you way to You make him feel peaceful, and he's just like, oh. 
Why are these yeah. robots attacking me? Yo, we're we're sad. Don't, don't want to do you're this. You're scared. You're scared. Would make sure. sense, right? Then he's just like, yeah, I'm going to fight these. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but fear, can, can, fear can, can generate a lot of, you know, fear can generate someone's fight or flight factor and make them fight harder. Yeah. Like, okay. You call it weepy and shit. Like as we're looking over the, the scoreboard or whatever, the timer is like, oh, okay, we got, we got a narrow window here to do something, right? And I don't know if that something is that piece of iron that uh, Seamus is always carrying around or whether it's that sweet, sensual juju magic you got in your fingers. I don't know what it is. But we got to yeah. do something with this guy to make sure that we both get our information we need as well as make sure that he does not survive his trip to the farm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I say let's try to spike out his sad, and then send him off. And then if he doesn't die that way, then we then we send him to the floor. You gotta make it to where he's sad. Like like maybe like life's hopeless. Like no matter how much D he gets, no matter how high he climbs upon that pole, the totem pole, it, he's he's never gonna mean anything. He's really just a hollow, empty shell. Of a man, an existential an crisis, an existential life that will never mean anything at all. Like that well, kind of within sad, there's apathetic, so you could just not care that just get punched in the face. Just like, yeah, exactly. Life is useless. Nothing means anything. Why even try to survive? Do I even want to take my supplements today? Do I need a tan? Like, no, just let yourself go. Just just go become a moroc and eat cave fish down in the tunnels. Yep. All right. Yeah. Or I like it. Movies. I like it. It's it's completely foreign to me. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I think that it could work. Yeah, let's do that. And then plan B is we send him to the farm. Plan B is I remove his head from his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so blunt. Uh, so where are you approaching him first? Is it at the D the, ball, the Modito sure. place yeah. or Modito, I think. Okay. So when you approach, he's there and he's a glorious specimen of a oh. man. Uh <laughs> I also have like the ocular implants, the HUD, and everything. What's his D levels at? His D levels are extreme. He is third no, on the leaderboard uh, of D levels in this community of millions of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime level of body workout, mighty fuse. Uh, and he's only wearing a thong and a very tight banana hammock no extra material anywhere and his entire body has been olive oiled extra virgin your hud picks up the the extra virgin content extra virgin olive oil something we're not going rest between the thighs of imported italian virgins (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i feel like when i walk up i do that same. so he's he's sipping on modito and doing squats at the same time yeah of course Okay. And his butt is bouncing as he does it. <laughs> have you seen Harvey Glasscock's picture I put in his bio? If you I'm haven't, it's to. a treat. You should you should treat yourself to it real fast. I'll check it out. And then so. uh, I think you should um, talk. Do that. Did you ever see that YouTube speech that Arnold does when he compares working out to sex? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Do that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think something important. So am I actually? seeing this guy even from a distance yeah yeah he's real real there's no veil about him well no uh i think this triggers one of my things i think i get five xp when i meet my maker where's that from uh i believe that's from i I mean you have to meet him i assume that means go up and talk to him i don't know i guess that's up for interpretation it says when i meet my maker i get five xp Okay, well, when you meet him, you mm-hmm. will get that XP. So I'm gonna remember, like, ah, Ulrich, remember he wants to destroy you 2.0, so. <laughs> John Baptiste, it's been how many, it's been like at least, what, three or four cycles since we've seen each other? You look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, who are you? John Baptiste, oh, you're always such a kidder. John Baptiste, it's me, Harvey Glasscock of Mizugumi, Shekelstein, and Glasscock. So he stops, like, bouncing, and he's like, ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, Glasscock. I know this name. Yeah, very important people. Is yeah, uh, let, me, let me buy you a Modito. A mo- Modito over here, please. Yeah, I, I already have a Modito. I only take so many kilocalories in before a fight. I suppose that makes sense. Uh, look, you look kind of tense. Did I, did I mention that I walked up your hamstring a little bit tight? 
Yeah, I yeah. You know, your law firm has a reputation. When you show up, you are trying to either get something from someone or you are investigating some sort of imbalance between the families. So you can understand my natural apprehension to having you appear of in front course. of me before a fight. Of course, buddy. Look, look, friend. Look, all I was saying is I was, I was across the bar. I, I want to be clear here, the... Mr. Glasscock. I need to keep my deltoids very loose for the upcoming fight. Or I will not Precisely. be able to crush the, the robots. Small circles. Small circles out to the side. Just loosen them up. I'm talking about your hammies, though. All the power comes from the legs. And believe me when I say I know where power comes from. But I just got this. So, yeah, he looks weapon. down at you and is like, yeah, you seem like a man who works out quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, look, look. I just got in an imported massage therapist, like neuromuscular massage. And he is the best, the very best money can buy. And he's just, he's right over here. I'm going to point back towards Kip. <laughs> okay. And I'm just yeah. saying, I looked, I saw you had a little bit of a range of motion problem because your legs are just so mighty. They're so huge. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I feel like this is an ultimatum. It's what? An ultimatum. I, I'm trying to convince him. Yeah, you're I'm trying to get him to do something you want. Okay, is that You an say what you want, and what you'll do if you don't, oh, if you don't get it. This is Sway. Oh, sway, okay, yeah, Sway. Sure. Yeah, sure. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, look, 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 look. I'm gonna pull out, like, my creds or whatever. Yeah. Wouldn't this be, be like, Sway? Look, yeah, it's Sway. I have already paid for the services. I'd be more than you're you're such an amazing physical specimen. I would feel it would be wasted on me. But yeah, like, I already am there and I'm like, I've got his like uh arm or something, and I'm always I'm already like, ah, oh, yes. You're yeah. about to about to hit him. Go ahead and roll that sway to see if he's just pulls okay. away. From... Um I have a bonus to this from something. Hold on. Oh no, it's, that's for leaning on people, I guess. I can pay people to like get bonuses. Um... Yeah, that's what you pay me for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and skip to some extent. Okay, yeah, I'll just roll the, the straight roll. Um, I'm feeling—I don't know if I'm feeling particularly powerful about this. I feel like the balance of power may actually be in his favor. Uh, what do I feel about that? I don't feel particularly peaceful. I probably feel a little scared, honestly. This is a yeah, you see guy. huge D levels. Yeah, he's got, he's got a bigger D than me, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> All right, let's go dice for once. I have not rolled over a fucking Oh, five. shit. <laughs> All right. Oh. So, yeah, he turns towards Seamus, and mm -hmm. it's clear that to you, Seamus, you've seen this look before. This guy is is like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you are the enforcer for the Mitsurugi glass clock, whatever. Uh, I'm getting very tired of this man hanging around me. He's invaded my personal space. Can you make sure that he understands that we now have a societal debt? Um, sir, you owe Giri to this man. Yeah, thank you for outlining that. Uh, and he, like, talking to, is he talking to me? Or is he's, he talking he's, to he's going through Seamus to talk to you. He's literally oh. like, I can't even talk to you right now. I will talk to your subordinate. Uh, <laughs> and he does the Assassin Creed thing where he puts a hand on your shoulder and pushes past you, but he does it to your face and leaves a big <laughs> olive oil grease stain all over your face as he pushes past and is like yeah my five minutes are up i must fight the robots now thank you very much i'll be like sir you forgot your modito and i'll like grab at it and like go to like give it to him or whatever but fall and trip on him and accidentally touch him or something <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna slide right off of it across the goddamn floor. <laughs> Would you say you're you're diverting him, right? Because you're trying to make him not notice you're about to How touch about him. I say I'm diverting him? And Okay, then, how are you diverting him? I'd be like, excuse me, Mr. Seamus, would you tell this big oaf that no one walks away from Harvey Glasscock and he now owes me, Geary? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll. How do you feel about this situation? You uh, sound a little mad. <laughs> Well, no, okay. this might be where uh, you start getting mad. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's actually, that's a fair point. It's the same thing either way. Can I'm I help very on salty that? right now. You can see my saltiness levels rising. Can I roll to help on that? Uh, yeah, sure. How are you helping? Yeah. Um, well, as, an, as 
an enforcer of the Geary, I'll say, sir, you cannot leave when a question of Geary is being raised. Legit. Oh, all right. Let's see if it goes down. If it does, he's going to be like, <sighs> come on, dice. Ba, 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 da. Okay, uh, so the good news is is that you get a plus one, yeah. so you drop to you jump to seven. But Shamus, you've exposed yourself to danger, retribution, or a cost. Um, well, it just means he's implicated in whatever happens to. Like, oh no, no, no! I I mean, it's literally going to be like this. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask for your services here, Enforcer. Uh, if you want to put yourself in my personal affairs, I insist that you give me the D. Right now, I want the D from you. <laughs> yeah, this is no laughing matter. So wait, he wants money from me? Yeah, he wants one cred from you because, you know, you've exposed yourself to a cost here. You and my question him. is, have we diverted him enough for Kip? You to get have him? diverted him in some way. You're going to get to pick two diversion tactics. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll transfer him one credit. All right. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And while this is happening, Harvey, how? What do you do when you're distracting him? I mean, I'm just like, okay, so what... I mean, your actions create an opportunity for someone else is literally what Kip needs. (laughs) So that might be a wise choice. (laughs) Yeah. That that was the whole idea. We got to get Kip in there. You have a second choice, though. You get to pick a second thing that happens. I'm going to go with um, we glean a flaw or weakness. Okay. Um, Yeah, as you're... As your neuromuscular massage begins, Kip, uh, Harvey, you notice that he's like, you see into his eyes, and he's got like cyber eyes that are displaying everything he's like looking at right now. He's got a cyber HUD, and you're like, your HUD decodes what he's looking at. It like reverses the image and enhances it, uh, and you can see he's he's currently on like a neuro veil cyber conference call using skype uh with several other members of the ulrich family and using some lip reading software real quick you know that they're all talking about 2.0 and they're they're like we can't find them we're gonna have to go to you know glasscock and associates soon if we we need to nail down 2.0 quickly before you know the explosion happens we can use him as bait bait him We can be the best baiters down here. I know where you're going with that, so I'm going to cut over to Kip, who's currently, yeah, you're massaging Mr. John Baptiste Ulrich Jr. (laughs) If unless he was like antagonist about it maybe like instead i'm just like i put my hand on his and i'm like excuse me sir you forgot your like mojito or whatever uh yeah and you get a hand on him while while you're handing him the mojito he he like maybe the scene's playing out in slow motion he's like i don't need those kilo calories and like your hand slowly <laughs> boop, and time stops when you begin emotionally scanning him of some kind Sure. Um, yeah. What about so? Yeah, that means I spike out mad, which means my mad actually becomes a plus one. I but, mean, you have to roll absorb, right? Yeah, but to do that, like, you still need to um, tell me what's going on with my mad stat. So um, basically, it's like pre-warning me of a negative consequence if I was to keep staying with that mad stat, oh. or. I, so I need to tell you what kind of bad thing will happen if you keep being mad. Yeah. I mean, if you go into meltdown here, you could very well start calling Petunia and just like mouthing off. You could destroy any relationship you have with her forever. Cause you're already thinking about her, Kip. It's subliminal. It's everywhere. It's in the veil. Hmm. What's wrong? Don't want to risk it? <laughs> for the well, woman yeah. you love so think, much you see her everywhere i think his ideology is that uh people always leave or whatever so i think uh-huh. i'll risk uh-huh. it 
Perfect. I think someone just earned some XP later. Oh. Well, that's <laughs> bad. Well, you take one harm. You get to pick one. What do you want to do here? Let's see. Oh, I'll still do the plan um, and spike out his... Uh, so you're clearing uh, an emotion spike? Um, or you're filling his sadness? Filling his sadness All right. like, to the max, yeah. All right. Okay, so he's now very sad. Uh, yeah. So after you touch him, he like looks like he's tearing up. And he's like, I'm... I'm sorry, gentlemen. I must get to the robot fight. <laughs> well, are these tears? It's the amount of kilocalorie energy I'm spending crying. <laughs> I must stabilize it. And he like takes a sip of the Modito and is like, this is way outside my energy consumption ratings. What is wrong with me? Well, uh, there's one thing I have to ask. So he was on the conference call in the veil. Did yeah. I see that or hear that? Uh, I feel like now that we've established that in the fiction, you maybe you saw it from a great distance. Uh, unless you're willing to risk getting closer, however, you're not gonna like overhear anything. Well, you know I what's do, happening. Okay, I do want to not for that, but like as he leaves, I do want to risk at least uh, maybe just talking to him, but like with like hood up and whatnot, so I'm kind of concealed. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I am not a robot. I would like to speak with you. No, it's like, literally just more... about them talking about you. You just walk up and you're like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to do that, but it's like more like when he leaves, I just want to kind of just like brush past him, excuse me, and then just kind of analyze him if I could. Okay. Uh, Yeah, go for it. Okay. You Assassin's Creed him. Uh, do, do, do. This is now, now that you've analyzed him, he's going to show up as a red icon on your HUD at all times, and he'll have a red glow around him. Do I, uh, Specific I really... locations on his body will light up orange to indicate his weak points. <laughs> I don't know what I should do for this, because I don't know if I really want to just analyze him, because like in the game sense, it does something different than what I'm doing. I just kind of want to gain information on my creator, because I, I, mean, just, you could probe I have him, an interaction right? with him. You, you can probe him because you're having an interaction. Okay. Yeah, I'll do a probe, but okay. I'll probably do this from a peaceful state. Or actually, no, powerful state, because with, in his uh, in 2.0's time spent with uh, Harvey, he's felt more ambitious and tries to approach things in you know, the way that Harvey would. So he, I guess, goes for a powerful probe. Wait, do you, kind of when you do this powerfully, are you literally, like, shoulder-checking this guy? Like, sup, bitch? Well, it really might just be, like, he shoulder-checks and he just goes... Pardon me. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, hold one. You can ask one question. What do you intend to do? Oh, yeah. You can see that he intends to head down to the robot fighting area and just... Uh, I mean, I guess I'll fight some robots, but really, my mind is on 2.0. I just gotta destroy 2.0, but right now, these tears... I'm so confused right now. I Maybe I'll fight robots? Something. I gotta get this off my brain. Okay. So does that count as me meeting my maker? I really feel like you gotta interact with him. Was me just bumping into him and just looking and trying to analyze him? Alright, so I'll give it to you, Chip. You're working hard <laughs> at not getting shot in the face. Oh yeah, 5 XP to spend on shit. Oh. I think I'm gonna yeah. get some playbook moves, seeing as I'm gonna be fighting. So, unless you have something you want to do in the interim, he goes down to the arena and starts fighting robots, but it's oh, it's so lethargic. He's just like punching one in the face, and the one is like, "No, please stop! Do not destroy me!" And he's just like <laughs> hanging off it, like, "Ah, oh, oh, I just don't he have it in me tonight." <laughs> the crowd is like. Boo. Maybe maybe every time he like punches one or something, it goes into slow motion and it cuts to me yelling at my girlfriend at the same time. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys are opposite states now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm like, uh, Chip, Chip, snap out of it. We gotta find this guy's personal secretary or whatever and get the data we need from him. He's, he's, he's just beating him up so slow like or whatever. 
Yeah, meanwhile, I'm fighting about basically the fact that I slept with Glasscock while he's talking in the background to Patino. <laughs> is that a scene we need to... that skinny bitch and get over here and do your job! Is, is that a scene we want to do real quick with you talking to Petunia? Um, we only have 45 minutes to wrap up, so it's up to you guys. Go for it. I mean, all you have to do is kill one guy. How hard could it be? <laughs> sure. So I'll be like, uh, Petunia, it meant nothing. It meant nothing. You're all... I know it meant nothing. Well, you're nothing, too. I hate you, but we okay, should Okay, I hate together. you as well. <laughs> We should get back together. I don't understand. No, we're not going to get back together. You literally just echoed all of my sentiments. You're gross. I'm surprised you know what Why would you sleep means? with Harvey Glasscock? He's like, ugh. Well, I can't Mr. believe. Fletch, would you like me to kill her? <laughs> Why did you no. stop and look around like that? Oh, you're so weird. If you will just do this goddamn job for me, Kip. <laughs> Is that Glasscock in the background? Let him know that he's a swarty little gnome. Uh, no one you, likes your him. Your sex means nothing. You should just let it go, woman. You know what? Let it go. Let it go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the top of the caldera and I'm gonna rise like the break of dawn. Okay? I'm gonna go outside and get some D. Jimmy, 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 buddy, 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 buddy. I'm, I will give you this entire brick of D. Okay? The whole thing. If you can go and crush whatever it is Kip is using to distract himself, well, we are on a very important time sensitive mission. Of cred, you mean? Or? I'm like. Yeah. Him a favor. Why are you hanging out with him? He's literally gonna try to crush your face implants. At least he opens up to me in a way you never did. Well, that's fine because I never liked you. I was no. using you for sex. You're not gonna do it for me. So Gl Glasscock told me to, to go <laughs> destroy. It. I'll pull. I'll pull out my sword and start walking towards Kip. <laughs> well, Kip, I think you sense some danger imminent. <laughs> Um, Danger close. Danger close. I think that I'm going to uh, do something risky in that I'm going to avoid him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you like see the, the sword coming for you. Samurai is stalking him with a katana. Yep. I'm just like running around yelling at her the whole time. All right, fine. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lean back. I'm back. Like, D2.0, this is why eventually all humans are going to die. And it's just gonna be <laughs> Now, 2.0, I want to remind you, you can't allow a human to come to harm by inaction. <laughs> by my own inaction, yes. Yeah. And I'm still spiked out because I only did mad. So I think that her telling me that I uh, was just used for sex made me sad. So I'm going to roll this. <laughs> To get out of the way of danger while I'm sad. <laughs> so on screen, though, I think it means it looks. You know that scene in Friends when Rachel's like, "We should break up," and he's like, and Ross is like, starts crying, but then he's like, "Fine, I don't like you anyway." It's like that. Yep. Okay. Oh. Fine by me. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're definitely going to fail avoiding imminent danger. So what happens? I believe that Shamus needs to make a roll to wreck your shit in uh, via neutralize, right? Or, well, I mean, you tell me, Shamus, how are you removing Kip's connection to the veil? Oh, uh, let's see. Is there a way for me to interject into this? Yes, so what you can help or hint her. Well, no, I mean, this is, I can't allow it to happen, so... It, I have to intervene. I literally have to get in the way of whatever he's going to do. Okay. So that's just what's going to happen. <laughs> well, it depends just if, to kill everyone. <laughs> well, it depends on what uh, the intent of Seamus is first, though. Tell us how you're doing this, Seamus. All eyes are on you. Well, how is this this call? Is this call like you know using implants in your head, or is this actual a device that you're using, or? I think we've established it's kind of like neural implants, right? Because it's in the Digiscape. It's on the internets. So he's trying to run away, so I'm going to knock him prone and probably threaten him to hang up so we can continue. Okay, so you're going to issue an ultimatum to him then? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. So not a physical yeah. threat yet. 
And then how are you going to intervene, though? Well, no, if he goes to, like, punch you, like, if you don't... I mean, he's... he's So what happens, 2.0, is Kip gets tripped, and now Shamus is standing over him with the sword and threatening him. So I feel like oh. now would be a great time for you to step in and hinder that. Yeah. Yeah, All right. so I definitely hinder. So roll while picking an emotion. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Powerful. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. You can wow. give Shamus a plus one or a minus two. Minus two. <laughs> okay, Shamus, you now need to roll to deliver your ultimatum. What is the thing that happens if you he doesn't say, you know, I'm going to get off this call? Um, let's see. Do, do, do. I stab him in the forehead. <laughs> Death. <laughs> all uh, well, it's 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 it, for all intents and purposes, it's a freaking lightsaber. So I'll probably burn his cheek. And I mean, him. one thing you could say here is like I will forcibly eject you from the veil, right? Because that's that's a thing we've established yeah. you can do. You can like block his connection, which will mess him up pretty bad. So yeah, go ahead and roll your Either ultimatum. Either you get off that call, or I will get you off that call. How are you feeling about this? I'm calm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> so, peaceful then. Yeah. Okay. He's calm as a Hindu cow. <laughs> okay, well, you I'm have to choose. Two, but that doesn't you... matter. Do you want Shamus to carry out his threat, or are you going to back down and give him what he wants? Oh, you muted, muted. yourself. Oh, I'll, I'll back down, and I'll, I'll probably say, like, uh, I'll just, like, I'll just be, like, yeah, despondent and sad about it, and just be, like, click or whatever. Like, her hollow face goes away. <laughs> uh, the camera stays on her, uh, and she's just like, oh. Thank God that's over with. Maybe I'll never hear from him again. <laughs> anyway, back with the home team here. Uh, now can we get about our mission? John Baptiste Ulrich Jr. finishes his robot fights in record time. Uh, the officials basically throw him out of the stadium. And so he goes to his uh, like winner's box to await supplicants who wish to do business with him. And we're waiting on Harvey to actually get back from being BRB. Okay. So let's just say he's distracted with something. What do us three do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we still us. need to make our way to uh, that place. Yeah, right. so, I mean, you come before the winner's box. It's everything you'd expect from a VIP box at Yankee Stadium, right? Outside is a sealed door with two security guards, huge Icelandic men with... Blonde hair, but instead of having pale skin, they're like deeply tanned. Uh, and it's fake spray on, too. Uh, and super dark sunglasses, like midnight they black. They don't have real D? They absorb light around them. These sunglasses are designed to like remove photons around them in the veil. So holographic projections around them get darker. Wow. They skew the color level of everything around them. So like holding a, a magnet too close to an old style TV. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how serious these sunglasses are. <sighs> so up. Um is he still in there fighting? No, no, he's in the winner's box right now, awaiting okay. people who want to come to him. When you approach the door, one of the guards is like, Yeah, excuse me, what is it you would like? Um, well, my name is Harvey Glasscock. I'm sure you've heard of me. Harvey Glasscock Esquire. And he's my associate. And uh, we have pressing business to attend with uh, Mr. Jean-Baptiste Ulrich Jr. Yeah, I have heard of you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna make to like, just move, like squeak between them. Uh, they do that thing that King's Guards do. They just whoop. Uh, oh, yeah, and are like, yeah, uh, what is your stated purpose of this visit? Um, well, I, uh, I have a, a business proposal. Uh, he's looking for a certain sensitive piece of technology, which I uh, may have information regarding. 
What kind of information? Oh, just tell him that uh, Deuce points Omega. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Deuce point Omega. Yeah. Uh, and so he, know like, what it means. he calls it in, and then he's like, yeah, he wants to see you on immediately, but I'm going to have to remove all of your weapons. Oh, please, go ahead. Uh, and so both of them begin sides. patting you down. None of your weapons have, like, any hidden tags or anything, right? No. Okay, uh, so what do you have? I've got, I've got like, my megaphone gamma ray gun. You know? <laughs> That's just hanging off of his G-string. Yeah, they take <laughs> off of his G-string. <laughs> they take that off of you, for sure. Okay. Ooh, tickles. Anything else? That's all I've got, for sure. Okay, yeah, they take it off. And then they send you inside. Uh... He's just sitting there with a, a like cake, and some uh, r- raisinets and a like large greasy cheeseburger, okay. and he's just like stress eating it. Just he... blowing his macros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Glasscock again. I apologize for my situation. I appear to be under some emotional distress after I punch those robots. Hey, it's okay, big guy. I feel you said something about the 2.0 robot. He has been causing me a lot of heartache. I just need him removed immediately. When you say remove, what do you mean? And I'm going to sit down next to him, like, uncomfortably close. When you say remove, what do you mean remove? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, within the next 48 hours, if I don't find him and disable him, he is going to explode. The fusion generator inside his body has been going haywire. The antimatter containment within it is scheduled to completely drop out. Oh, yeah, I mean, we will all be instantly wiped out, several million people. If I, I don't I find him in the next 36 hours, I'm going to get an airlift over to, you know... Uh, Great Britain, but they have the most terrible food. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and probe this guy. Yep. yep. Oh, my. I'm going to probe him as hard as I can. And I think right now, I think given his current emotional state being as broken down as he is and sort of resigned to this robot now they're being found, I think I'm actually feeling the upper hand here. So I'm going to go with the powerful role. Okay. I see double digits. Yep, I that's double, double digits. digits. Okay, you get right. three questions. Okay, uh, are they? Is he telling me the truth about why he wants to find two point oh? No. Okay. <laughs> um. How could I get him to reveal that information? Oh, that's a good question. Ask me something else while I think about that. Okay. Okay. Um, what does he intend? Does it have to be just this like short list or could it be any number of things? Um, I'd like to stick to the list. Okay. Uh, what does he intend to do with 2.0? Uh, I mean, it's, you can ask, what do you intend to do? Okay. Uh, and what he intends to do is, um, you know what? We'll do this in the veil real quick. So while he's super sad and you're probing him, you're like entering the stream of consciousness of his thoughts and you see like images around and mm. you see him like taking 2.0, capturing him, and then you see him at 2.0 standing in front of some sort of device and he plugs 2.0 into it and there's like a big like 100% complete bar and it goes like pew. Uh, And then he, like, wipes his brow at the end of it and gives a huge thumbs up. And Mm -hmm. everybody cheers and is like, yay, you did it, Ulrich. Yeah, okay. Um, Uh, And so how you could get him to, uh, what was the question? Like, reveal his plans about 2.0? Yeah, how can I get him him to, um, to tell me what he, yeah, what he intends on doing, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Um if you were to to like imply that uh you had some way of of when he had 2.0 like helping publicize his great victory. Cuz you've seen, you've seen that he really wants everybody to cheer for him after whatever he does at 2.0 is. Oh yeah. He I'll wants to sense. be seen as having a lot of D on camera 
And well, that's a great way to have it happen. Well, look, look here, uh, Mr. Jean-Baptiste Ulrich Jr., sir. Uh, my team is very skilled. And I believe that they have vital pertinent information, each of them individually, about this particular problem you and your corporation, your family are having. So what, what I'd like to do here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put like a stack of three creds on the table. Like, let me go ahead and buy you uh, a couple of more, a couple more moditos. Just to help wash that cake in the I mean, cheese. that's like several hundred moditos. Uh... I know, I'm, I'm saying Okay, yeah, like... you're bribing him. Exactly. And uh, let's all sit down and talk about uh, how we could make this mutually beneficial for everyone involved. Because uh, I have a feeling the the fame and the reward that can be heaped upon the Ulrich who brings 2.0 back to the family it will just be amazing. Go ahead and roll we'll sway. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Take advantage on that because so we're all three d six, and yep. then again, I'm feeling powerful. I need to be marking down powerful each time, right? Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Insanerapairhorn dot com. You got like a fourteen. <laughs> so yeah, he the whole time you're talking, he's eating the cheeseburger, mm -hmm. uh, and he like calls out to his gods. He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever Mr. Harvey wants, get those people in here. I'm going to need at least three more cheeseburgers. Uh, and you know, you should probably get one for Mr. Harvey as well. Oh, I, I'm actually on a diet, please. Just, uh, just the more details. Uh, get him a diet Coke as well. So there's actually uh, something I think what might be interesting while this is going on is, uh, I imagine I'm not being invited into here. I've been told to just stand off towards the side or whatever. I mean, like, what what Kip and Seamus are telling you to do is up to you. I'm saying everybody come in. Even me. I said my, my associates. Okay. So that said, then yes, but I just had the idea that uh, since I got some XP, I could spend it on a move, and then I wanted to do something. And maybe <laughs> predisposed. Well, maybe I'm like still agitated, and you're taking care of me outside or something. And then I just get distracted. Yeah. So uh, the new move that I spent one of my XP on was interface. And I'm going to say that, like, maybe I'm walking by, waiting outside, just kind of investigating. And then I see that giant shaft that controls the veil in this area. And then I want to interface with the veil itself. Oh, my God. He's he's a giant shaft. So uh, uh, when you integrate or open your mind uh, to another intelligence that isn't human, you may name an NPC and establish the intelligence and disposition with the MC. Whenever you merge with another, um, both of you are afflicted in some way, the MC will tell you uh, at the appropriate time. So I'm imagining I just kind of like notice something weird about the main central D unit that's going through this uh, shaft as it's flickering on and off. And I kind of interface with this unknown entity. What do you call it? Uh, let's call it the light. How Something simple. Tell me about its intelligence level. I'm pretty intelligent. It's I, I think it's going to be like kind of maybe like a manifestation of the, a personality of the veil, if you would. And its disposition? I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you if that's possible. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so you're reaching out to uh, the wireless network and... You want yeah. to talk to it or something? Well, it, it, I think interfaces, I just kind of merged with it to gain some to, sort of information, and you just tell me how it works. Okay, affects. yeah, so, I mean, you begin, like, recognizing this thing as its own entity, and it's <laughs> like, hello! <laughs> yes, hello! Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm just fine. I've never talked to anybody before. I've never seen something quite like you before. I could say the same to you, pal. You're much unlike these other beings and myself. I wouldn't know. I just got consciousness about 500 microseconds ago. Do you think it's a singularity between the two of us? I suppose so. Okay, and then it's just going to be kind of like a merging type thing after that. Unless I wonder really if I lose consciousness when you stop merging with me. Will that be like dying? These are questions <laughs> I am not prepared to answer. Okay, well, I haven't developed emotions yet, so I suppose if you leave me and I die, I won't be angry. 
Of course, if I'm dead, I couldn't be angry. Are you, like, merging away from him as he's saying that? Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this literally just says whenever I merge with it. So I think it exists, but I just, I don't know what happens, like, Fraser. I mean, it's still its own NPC. Uh, yeah, it's its own NPC. And you can come back to it and be like, I'm going to merge with it. Yeah, uh, so I think it's... And so the thing that happens uh, that affects is, like, it gets its intelligence when you're merged with it. Otherwise, it's just a machine. Sure, I'm just going to kind of merge with it just to kind of... That's how I'm talking to it is this merge that's happening. Okay, well, listen. I have some very strict programming, so if you're trying to get extra information out of me, you shouldn't have. Like, listen, I don't go that way. Don't go into those data ports, all right? I like to stay nice and tight in that area. I understand. I have strict protocols. I don't want you opening up any more bots, okay? We're already way closer than I'm comfortable with. I know you might be responsible for my sentience, but that doesn't make you special to me or anything, okay? The same goes to you. I am only designated to help humans. Oh, okay. Well, Mr. Hoity Toity, you make me, and now you're just gonna leave me, huh? You can come along with if you would like. I, I mean, no I'm a friggin' computer core. You think I can move? Within the veil, you can do anything you wish. Oh, you know, that's a pretty good point. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna do what I want then. Sure. What is it you will do? I like Sudoku. Uh, and immediately, like, millions of Sudoku show up in the Vale all across the Icelandic volcano. And people are just like, why is that Sudoku there? Why is it solving itself? <laughs> I'm simultaneously solving every Sudoku that's ever been created. That is quite a feat. Yeah, it's actually taking up a whole bunch of processing power. Everybody on the lower levels is getting washed out. Oh, that might be a predicament. That might harm the humans. I suppose that's... He's just... like, I don't right. care about no friggin' humans. <laughs> well, as soon as I identify that that's going to be an issue that harms a human, I'm going to de-interface with Okay, it. yeah, and all the lights come back on. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, 2.0, are you going to the meeting with everybody? Uh, if I'm asked to, yeah. All right, you guys are all in the office with him. He's eating his fourth cheeseburger uh, and has a cheeseburger in front of Harvey with a Diet Coke. Uh, and the di uh, like, as you approach in the veil, you can see it's got a warning like, able, label for like aspartame levels uh, may cause cancer. This drink can be used to strip uh, battery crud away from batteries. Uh, Diet Coke, apparently, the veil does not enjoy it. Mm. Like, all right, all right, oh, oh, Seamus, Seamus, uh, Kip, Kip, Seamus, this is, as you've already met him before, but this is, uh, Jean Baptiste Ulrich Jr., and Jean Baptiste is looking for a robot. I'm gonna give him a big stage wave again. <laughs> robot named. Yeah, yeah, his name is 2.0. Oh, man. Um, can I try to charge the object for his, like, if someone's berating him a tray of cheeseburgers, I want to, like, touch the tray and charge it. All right. So you know what happens? If you've seen Kingsman, they had that scene where there was, like, a huge bowl of McDonald's special sauce uh, and, like, fries and burgers they brought in on a silver tray. And yeah. so one of his guards literally brings him that, and he's like, yeah, it's just salty fries. I feel like I need a little sweet of salt right now to recover the levels I have lost in my tears. Uh, you wanna, you wanna slap the trays that's going past and yeah, sure. Trying? Okay, tell me what's happening here. Um, I wanna. I think I'm feeling. Let's see, probably vindictive because that altercation led to like I'm not. I'm blaming everybody except myself, right? For okay. lashing out, so I'm I'm mad. But because I failed at sad, I'm um, washed out for my emotions again. So maybe it'll work. We'll see. Even though it's my first stat. Yeah. All right. So uh, when you channel energy, uh, so I, I want to make him suffer humanity harm okay uh 
and I want it to be, <laughs> well, I mean, going off of what's happened, I want it to be, he literally was feeling what I was feeling when she like <laughs> broke my heart. <laughs> wow. You're a monster. Okay. He's literally <laughs> fucking bawling salty tears directly into this huge bowl of McDonald's special sauce. Like, and then I, I look the at they last and talk and I'm like, eh? Why? Oh, no. Why he, is this happening to me? I Jamie, don't maybe understand. you should give him some consolation. No, huh? no, it's I apologize. I should not be allowing this emotion. Kill him now, Jamie! Get him! I <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> 2.0, are you here? Yeah, he's here. You can't you can't allow this to happen, right? Well, but so does he actually like I was being serious when I like I was like, remember when you hear kill kill you get sent to the farm or whatever, so he hears like <laughs> Get some <laughs> <Get some apart! laughs> I feel like pull, your I, might not be an idiot. Uh, I don't even hesitate. I just pull out my gun and shoot him. Are you interfering uh, with this 2.0? I can't muted. hear you. You're muted. muted. I don't think I'm here at this point. I think this is all happening while I'm interfering. Oh, okay. Well then, oh, Seamus. Perfect. Yeah, well, roll your neutralize because you're about to neutralize the fuck out of him. Well, I want to impose one thing. Is like maybe as this is all happening, a giant Sudoku board appears in front of the two of them. Shamus like, <laughs> <laughs> is like doing slow motion Max Payne style, and then like a giant nine appears in front of him. He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> so are you trying to interfere? No, no, he's not interfering. Oh. You just need to roll neutralize. And meanwhile, he's just like, well, I guess Ugh. it won't be so ba bad ba to get back. I fail. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to feel powerful. You whip out the gun, and he just fucking backhands you in the face. <laughs> and it's not like he backhanded you, and you're like, ugh, okay, I took a big hit. It's like your neck might slap, snap, and you get sent flying into the corner. Uh, so go ahead and take two harm. My question is, would he have been given advantage because the dude was so, like, inconsolable because of what Kip did to him? Mm, I don't think so. No? Yeah, all right. If anything, his adrenaline is, like, fucking pumping right now. Uh, and, of course, you just tried to shoot him in the face. So, yeah, he's, like, <laughs> roid raging out right now. He's still sad, but he's like, Why? Why wouldn't would you attack me, Mr. Glasscock? No, I don't <laughs> well, it's me. I didn't attack you. It was my associate. Damn it. And then maybe I'm like scrambling much... across the floor away from this guy. <laughs> so maybe what happens is he backhands uh, him, and then we, the camera like shifts around, and you just see like my palm glove like reaching towards his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? I'm trying to I'm trying to neutralize him. Oh, okay. And hmm, what would I be feeling? Uh, afraid. It's yeah, afraid. I mean, this guy's confused. Probably... Yeah, scared. Uh, in scared, there's confused. This guy you fights robots that? for a living. So oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll do that. <gasps> yes. Oh. Boom, bum, boom. Nice. So, bum, bum, bum. Um, the way that works is I get hold <clears throat> in the scene. Yeah, you get three hold. What do you want to do? I want to. So, the first bit of harm will be like me actually connected with his face and then doing the stun harm. How much is it? Um, first, stun harm, it's not like a value because yeah, it just like causes them to be stunned. Okay. Um, and then I want to, since I, since on a 10 plus, I take no harm in the doing, I'll force a change of location. So I'll like kick him in the solar plex, which doesn't do damage. Cause he's like, a you're going to push him out the window behind him and mortal combat him into the arena <laughs> or something. And then I want to try to impress dismay or frighten at him by like yelling while I do it in the scene too. Wow. So you literally 300 him. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> he goes flying out the window and is like, 
<laughs> well, while he's unconscious, too. <laughs> Well, no, uh, he had just put in, like, all that emotion no. about being sad towards uh, that one chick, so he probably just punches him and just says, Priscilla will never love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he's just like, Psh, ah. All right, yeah, he's he's not unconscious, but he's groggy and getting up on the arena floor, where there's, like, killer death bots fighting Paley the Destroyer. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys want to do now? Um... I want to take another shot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you lean out the window and blah, blah. All right. Go ahead. Make my day. You. Have, what are you doing? How do you feel here? Do you still feel powerful, or do you feel maybe that you no, got the I'm mad that ready? I screwed up? Oh, okay. Yeah. So salty. Yeah. All right. You, you take no harm in the doing. What three things would you like to do? Let's see. Um, so he's in the pit with the robots? Yep. Well, definitely inflict harm. Okay, how much harm does your gun deal? Let's see, that is... Do, 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 do. Other page. Oh, let's see, that's my Flechette SMG, so two harm. Okay. And... Let's see... Um... I'm going to, of course, dismay or frighten him because it's pretty scary getting shot <laughs> by actual ammunition. <laughs> Look, all right. We can have this theoretical discussion about whether or not your primitive projectiles are better than our gamma rays. <laughs> Anything else? You have a third point, right? You've inflicted, um, you dismayed. I mean, you don't have to spend it if you don't have anything else you want to do. Can you double harm him? Yeah, you can choose it multiple times. Oh, can you? Well, then, yeah, you can definitely just kill him here. You know, triple oh, harm. yeah, then I will definitely. Right. Yeah, you just keep keep shooting him over and over again. And people in the crowd are like, what's going on? And the robots are, like, moving to block the shots. But by the time they, like, get there and football tackle to, like, block the shots, <laughs> his face is just this pulpy mess of, like, gray matter and red blood. Mm. A job well done, Seamus, is why I keep you on retainer. Now, uh, Kip, if you're done crying about Petunia, it really should be very good for you. But, like, if you could actually use your gift to figure out what we need to figure out about how to black. You know, I could, I could do that to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can worry about that later. Like I said, don't even mention her name anymore. <clears throat> Call her Correct Bitch. And then... And then <laughs> We can go ahead and get the info we need from here. Okay. And I'll be like, oh, man, it's too bad we didn't get to send him to the farm, though. Oh, I think that he'll be fertilizing the but ground down there. I, 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 I did. He's dead. So I feel like the last scene of the night is maybe 2.0, just like walking down a corridor, dreaming of like flowers and farms and stuff. Uh, and there's like some really light, happy music playing that you would see in like a Barney show or something. That's like dun. Well, no. Da -da, I, imagine, da -da. I imagine after this, it's just going to be like all of these like AI entities of all the different robots and stuff that he's just walking around. He sees like a spark and he goes and talks to it. So he's talking with like every single device. So there's like all these like little veil stop awakening death bots. You don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't no, share your concern for humanity. Well, no, it's like he might go back to the bar and he might see like one of those server bots and go talk to it. And then it's, it awakens its consciousness and he just starts talking to it and apologizes. And says How long until you realize that your instilling <laughs> these things with consciousness presents a direct and present threat to humanity in general? And then because you're a threat to humanity, you develop the, the zeroth law of Asimov's robotics and you have to kill yourself because you're breaking the zeroth law. Boom. Anyway, that's a sequel show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us here tonight. We did a lot of things. Let's talk about beliefs. I feel like some people played their beliefs pretty hard. Uh, Chip, I mean, I'm just going to award you at least two for obey orders and not injure human being. Straight up. like Those are things you did, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know that you ever protected your own existence. Not okay. really, because I was never really forced to. Shamus, you definitely serviced 
uh, a lot of people, and you also gave away money when it was demanded. Like, you were like, I don't care about money. Shit, take it. So I'm willing to give you two points. Nice. Uh, Harvey, let's talk about you. I don't think Harvey really was able to leverage his beliefs that much. His I feel like you got D at the beginning of the episode for sure. I mean, but that's, you kind of have to give me D. Right, but you had to get the D to complete the mission, which you did. Well, you completed one of the three missions at the end. I feel like getting D is a thing that you did. I don't know that you talked yourself up super a bunch, but you did mention your name was Harvey Glasscock a lot. <laughs> I'm willing to give you that one as well. Well, I will say that in the elevator, I certainly was attempting to beat him with my proverbial D supremacy. Yeah, I'm willing to give you two <laughs> belief points. Kip, let's talk about you and your beliefs, because I didn't write them down. Um, I don't know if I did them, to be honest. I have never let people in. It's not worth taking on other people's emotional burdens. So maybe oh, I feel like you did the exact opposite of that. Yeah. You were like, Petunia. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like to... that could be resolved to some extent. Yeah, it that's true. No, it got you in... Tr I don't know that it got you in trouble, because, again, you kept doing the opposite. I yeah, will say, be, if you want it to be resolved, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, resolved because now I know, we know that I no longer believe it. You know. I know. And then try and show Glasscock there's more than D. Um, you failed horribly at that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd convince 2.0 to, to also keep people at a distance. Uh, yeah, you failed at that. His last scene was going and talking to robots. <laughs> <laughs> well they're not people uh but don't you see them as people no i see them as weird oh, sparkly okay things. um weird sparkly things. do you keep people at a distance though you so there's a thing you literally can't because you must obey their orders i must obey humans orders yes yeah so i didn't break any of the laws i didn't overcome my beliefs so uh some people got a lot of xp this episode by uh, slamming into their maker. Others got less. But I feel like we got a lot accomplished here today. And as everyone knows, three is the magic number. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know why I threw that in there. But Schoolhouse Rock, uh, for sure. Let's, let's break down the system for a second and talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, what we understood, what we thought could be better. Because, of course, I do this after most one-shots, but we literally have the creator here. So... Uh, don't be a uh, Virgil and Henley and savagely destroy the system. <laughs> no, uh, I enjoyed hashtag it. Apocalypse World. God, that episode was... Oh, they didn't like Apocalypse World? Uh, uh, so, uh, what, what was it? Um, yeah, they like fucking destroyed Apocalypse World dur during our review of it. Uh, yeah. So don't do that, guys. Come on. We can be honest here. But no reason to get brutal, oh, right? Got, Fraser got, has feelings. I got all kinds of <laughs> feedbacks and stuff. Cool. Uh, Let's talk about it, typical. Yeah, so going into the session, I was extremely confused. Like, no That's idea true. how this I will work call out. That. Multiple times, I posted the dog picture twice. No idea what I'm doing. I'm actually picking it up and playing it. The game plays extremely organically. Like, there's, there was no real inhibition. It's like, I want to do this thing. This is how you do it. It was very easy. As far as that's concerned, it is how Apocalypse World works in general. So, yeah, that was amazing. Um, the whole cybernetics, like gear stuff, um, was difficult for me to grasp at first. But then again, once I was pointing, it, that was okay. I mean, I, I feel like it was much easier once we invented that it was ultraviolet radiations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I absolutely love the every, the everything generation. We generate everything actively as we go. That was amazing. Um, the Geary, I didn't feel ever really came up that much. No, I know yeah. it was a session, but like I, I still am sort of foggy on how I use Geary, especially with other players. Yeah, you have to offer it to people to do stuff. So you'd be like, I want you to do this thing for me. Murder this man. Like, I tried to give people money to do that. Yes, um, I know. Yeah, that's that's how you operate, though. You're a money <laughs> right. man. Um, I liked the emotional state spectrum that would both add as well as spike you. So that was pretty cool. Um, so in general, like I just really enjoyed, I enjoyed the game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, not that hard to grasp once we got going. So overall, definitely really positive experience for sure. 
Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I always love <laughs> open-end games because it just allows, you know, idiots like me and typical to just rain free. Um, uh, but uh, it's always fun to see a lot of open-ended experience in games. You know, when you come from a background of D&D, everything is clearly stated for you. So it gives you a lot of interpretation, which I think is great for people who actually like to role play things out. Um, the everything it was better to play in person so i don't know how you would get that addressed to people maybe a um like a full scenario playbook i don't know if you had one yet or somebody or like a gm could actually see like you know you know how like people make pre-made adventures something like that might help um somebody understand the game a little bit um and the only real feedback i could say is geary is kind of confusing to grasp in a way and maybe uh i don't know how much of a core implement it is to like a long running game and you might consider it just an optional possibly i don't know sure you know like with the um corporate if you would you know a lot of things are resolved with money or a lot of things are resolved with an ultimatum the geary is more of an extra you know, I don't see it as a necessity, and that's my it only. It feels thing. super important to the honor bound, whatever they're called. Yeah, it does feel very, very important to the honor bound. I would imagine a possibly a scenario without an honor bound, it would not be as prevalent. Maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the whole system is designed that you can basically like cook whatever kind of cyberpunk you want. Yeah. So if you if you like lean on super interpersonal stories about cyberpunk, that's when you'll be using Geary a lot. If you lean towards like mega corporations and doing runs and stuff, it'll be mostly Craig probably. So I guess to take away from that is you might want to say that you know you could break down some things and say like an honor bound is good in this setting and maybe just have like some example settings for people and then have a supplemental rules for those settings. I remember was oh. I think I feel like there is something like that in the document where there might the be MC and I may not section, have just read it, but it has suggested things to do for each playbook. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think Geary could be a suggestion instead of a mandatory, and that's my only feedback really. But otherwise, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Mr. Gary, let's talk to you. Um, see, I always, I always make the mistake of uh, choosing a character archetype that's usually quieter and not as vocal as a lot of other character types can. So my interaction is unfortunately a little bit more limited than everyone else has been. But I, I actually like how how versatile it is because, like you said, you're able to cook basically whatever form of uh, world and adventure you want, and it helps provide a guidebook for that. So it can really bring out the creative side in a lot of people, and I think that's really nice. Cool. Uh, you know, Fraser, let's just ask you how you felt about this session. Just <laughs> Why don't you review us and our performance as players in this game that you created? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, thought it was, I thought it was awesome like everybody was having a great time and that's what it's meant to do and it's literally like I have a whole uh, thoughts on the player facing side as well as the MC facing side of like this is how you cook what you want to cook like if you want interpersonal stuff highlight the gear if you want like shadow run and stuff you want cred and you want these playbooks and stuff like that so I think I've got you covered there um in terms of using moves and stuff, I think uh, it worked exactly as intended, probably because Arthur's run, uh, you know, AW a few times, he knows when to like be like, sounds like you're doing this move, bam, let's do it kind of thing. Um, the only thing that I find people get hung up on is hold. If you haven't read the book, hold is literally like your agency in a scene. So instead of being like, an option that you choose from, from like inflict harm, you're actually like to do it, you do it. So you're like, I shoot him in the face kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing um, I think that comes up with players. But I mean, I mean, I had an amazing time. I didn't, I didn't uh, expect a funny like scenario <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, it really took me by surprise and made me uh, enjoy it a lot. So thanks a lot. Awesome. I think everyone you know, what's jiving really well. well. Let's do some outros here. Um, we'll go in reverse order from how we started, so I think we're starting with Chip in it. Chip, hey guys. let's talk about where people can find you and what you do. Hey guys, you can 
find me on Twitter at chipping it. You can find me on Twitch, chipping it. I don't do much, but feel free to contact me. I'm always down to join games, help people out, critique. Um, I've done a lot, and I know a lot of the people in the TTRPGs stream business and whatnot and it's always really fun so you might see me um if you follow me i usually always uh either tweet out when i'm going to be on a show or i uh host when i'm on a show and i have to apologize if i forgot to do that today okay all right uh speaking of someone who is a big name in the ttrpg community let's talk to typical gm where can people find you and what do you do hey boys typical gm twitter twitch discord whatever um, I do TTRPGs. I play on Henley's channel on Mondays with Arthur and Chip, um, and Virgil and Henley and Zephyr, or Zephyr, whatever, Gamer Siren. Um, I like gaming. It's fun. I also like shooting things and working out and punching things. So if you like any of those things, make sure you follow. Also, again, follow all these guys. Uh, I, I met, uh, I met Fraser on Henley's stream originally, I will say, uh, Canadian soy sauce. And uh, this has been a great experience. It's been a ton of fun. And uh, I can't stress enough, meet new people, play games with people, have fun, expand your horizons, and uh, learn from people like, you know, Chip and Frazier and Arthur. And I'm at Sip for the first time today. So just get to know new people. Our community is a great one and be a part of it. Cool. Well, speaking of great people, let's talk to you, Rich. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, thanks again for this. This has been fantastic, especially, you know, especially the characters you guys were able to throw out is it was a blast. And I'm really glad that I agreed to to come here tonight. Um, you guys can see me on my YouTube channel. We're at uh, youtube.com forward slash Sidalfa, where I do video game news, reviews, first impressions. And I'm also on Arthur's Twitch stream on Saturday nights at a vehicle driving by. <laughs> Um, where I play Rex Matheson on Winter's Edge. And I am on Twitter and Facebook. You can follow me on there. I'm definitely a lot more active on Twitter, though. And, yeah, it's been a blast, and I really enjoyed all of it. I did. All right. And Fraser, creator of this game. Just want to emphasize that for, like, the eighth time. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Fraser Simons. And, well... The Veil RPG. It is me. Yeah, it is me. <laughs> and um, yeah, I have a community for this game on G+. You can just search for The Veil and you can uh, check it out. I post all the artwork as it's coming in and stuff. It's great stuff. Um, and yeah, you know, I had an awesome experience. Thanks for inviting me. I thought it was amazing. And it felt uh, like I was just saying in chat, Arthur, it felt very snow crashy. So it, it, it was like it made sense that that was a touch. I had little to do with that, by the way. I know. Um, it, it felt like it, right? I feel like typical and chip really set the, the D on that one. I'd be saying set the bar, but the D was so involved that. <laughs> Anything else you want to throw out there? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, right. just thanks a lot. And yeah, hopefully we'll play together soon. You didn't mention your show with Eric. On Sunday oh, mornings, I just yeah. Yeah. give you a chance. Uh, to so we it. play Blades in the Dark on Sundays in the morning as well, and I highly recommend checking out Eric's uh, channel, especially for um, small press RPGs. He really showcases tons of them all the time. He wants to do a one shot of this as well, and then in the meantime, you can sate your hunger for RPGs at all these channels mentioned, and uh, then check out the stuff afterward too if you can handle it it's true i am twitch.tv slash ap gaming real you can also find me at ap gaming real on twitter facebook and youtube where i'm closing in on 900 hours of tabletop rpg content i am a tabletop rpg making uh basically machine and i stream seven nights a week at eight o'clock eastern so Drop by here if you have time. If not, check out on on the YouTube. Oh no, uh, I feel like that's it for the night. Just assume I said something really witty here, and everybody laughed at the end. And then we hosted Caitlin for some more uh, Dead by Daylight. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, boys. Bye. Bye.